Hey you guys, it's x 23 the Roller Pers Expert 2.0 here. And today I have another video for you guys. Now this video is gonna be on the Roller Pers Fast and Fashionable series. Now this is an obscure series introduced in 2001 and ended in 2004. There was a name change with the series that was changed to Girls Gotta Roll, but it was still in the Roller Pers Fast and Fashionable series. It was just like another name added on to the fast and fashionable branding. The name change happened somewhere in 2003. So like in 2003, it was officially changed to Girls Gotta Roll. And in 2004, the series ended. And this series is in fact a Roller Burst series. There is a video that was um, just made um, by that one person who I really don't want to mention who it is, but it's that one person who like sales wrong in my freaking, in my tutorial and fixing thing roller for gearboxes and stuff like that and like he was saying oh no you idiot you can't glue that gear that it's not the correct gear to glue when like i mentioned in that video that i fixed this mustang before that in video pretty much and it, it, it freaking drove and stuff and still does right now i'll prove it I actually didn't have to give freaking proof because like when I'm explaining how to fix something that item is gonna be fixed no matter what unless you're like you know you, you don't know what you're doing or you're like too incompetent to like fix it but yeah <laughs> and then in his video he was like talking about how like how the Mustang like has like a slight buzz in the speaker and stuff if you press a button um now, the only reason why that happens is because having memory. Now, you may be asking, memory? What do you mean? This thing must and can't think. It's not sentient, at least not yet. That's where you're wrong. If you press one of the buttons, the board stays on, which is what that slight buzz is in the speaker and stuff. Buckle up. Let's go for a drive. And once that buzz goes off, the board shuts off. The reason why it does that is so that way it can like leave off where you started basically. If you press the phrase button or if you press the music button, it'll leave off at that second phrase instead of resetting. For example, Buckle up, let's go for a drive. Hey, let's go shopping at the mall. That's to keep it from like resetting too dang fast and stuff. And you can't skip the phrases on the first gen Mustangs at all either. Because like um Buckle up, let's go for a dry. Hey, let's if you go try, shopping it will not Don't forget the shopping bag. Like um it won't like flip through like the phrases like super fast and stuff. Like on this one. And this one. And this one. But yeah, um, I'm not sure why they did that, but yeah. As I stated before, the series started in 2001. It is in fact a Roller Pro series, cause like he said, Oh, it's not a Roller Pro series. It is a Roller Pro series and stuff. There's even a Mustang with Roller Pro tires. On the tire itself, I mean. But yeah, um, need proof, I'll insert a picture. Well, well, well! Won't you look at there? There's the Mustang. Oh, what's this? PT Cruiser? Oh! He doesn't know what the hell he's talking about most of the time. All the time, actually. He tries to say that I'm freaking wrong and incorrect, yet you're freaking spewing out nothing but bull crap. Anyway, so the series undergoed a name change in 2003, obviously, like I said earlier. Girls got a roll. It's still fast and fashionable, still roll dipper. But yeah, just changed from fast and fashionable. I'm assuming to like, to like, um, fit in with like the new hip crowd basically. It was like the early 2000s and stuff. This is Girls Gotta Roll, this is Girls Gotta Roll, but you know, still fast and fashionable. These two are OG fast and fashionables because they're both first gen. These are early second gen, which is what Girls Gotta Roll predominantly is, even though like, like the name change happened in 2003. Early second gen came out in 2004. 
Cause like I mean, in 2003 they still had first gen stuff and yeah. <laughs> It's a roll upper series for girls basically, pretty much roll uppers for girls even though like normal roll uppers can be for girls as well cause you know, girls can collect vehicles as well. There's nothing wrong with that. It's kinda rare, <laughs> but it happens at times. I mean like I even know one who collects roll uppers. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> Some people may not like this series mainly due to like that fact that it's made for Barbie dolls and stuff like that. They're optimized to like carry Barbie dolls and stuff so they can like drive inside the convertibles, driving the freaking Vespas, Harleys and stuff like that. Me personally, I like the series because mainly like it's obscure as heck. It's really interesting <laughs> and yeah, I'm glad to have four vehicles from the series. Now you may be wondering what are all the vehicles in the series? So there's obviously the Mustang and the Acura and there's a pizza convertible and there's a Mini Cooper and of course the Harley Davidson and the Vespa and there's a dune buggy. Now um, I'm not sure if there's like any other vehicle in the series or not that's all the ones like that me Charlie and the others could find. Me and Charlie, we did freaking research on these things like big amount of research and stuff. We found like a lot of freaking pictures and stuff like that, like a boatload of pictures actually I have so much saved. Now one thing is, is that we couldn't find a picture of the Acura inbox and stuff and um, we couldn't find a picture of the dang dune buggy inbox or any other picture of the Mini Cooper. The main way that we know that the Mini Cooper exists is due to the fact that it's for sale except you know it's hilariously overpriced obviously because of them thinking that's older than what it is you guys know that that freaking that thing incorrect you're on the battery case from when toys they used to make holiday items and stuff they never like remove those incorrect dates and they just um update the freaking logo on the battery case only which you know that that that's dumb and annoying but toy state logic <laughs> Not saying that Toy State Logic is dumb, it's just confusing at times and stuff. That's what we call it, Toy State Logic. None of these are from the freaking 90s at all. Because, like I said, the incorrect years in the battery compartments are, you know, obviously not correct at all whatsoever. Just saying, do research, which, you know, like the majority of eBay sellers do not do, which leads them to, like, you know, putting the wrong date on the thing listings and stuff and overpressing the item for more than it's worth and them thinking that they have an item older than what it is. Not to mention that some collectors don't do research either, which you know, um, if you're gonna be like collecting a certain thing, you gotta like, you know, do some research at least to have some knowledge on what you're collecting and stuff. Cause like you can't be clueless when you're collecting something, especially if it's like, you know, complex, you can't like be like clueless as heck, not knowing what you're talking about. If you're like doing a review of something, you don't know what you're talking about and stuff you gotta like do research that way um you know you can like learn more about the items that you're collecting and the items that you have in your collection so uh yeah just uh just a tip do research <laughs> i cannot stress that enough do research it helps a lot now before you say, oh x -Bell, you're just being mean right there. Now can you just please stop being mean to me? You're gonna make me cry, boy. Now before you say that, um, I'm not trying to like be mean. I'm just trying to like, you know, help you out by saying this. Doing research, it really helps a lot, especially like if you need to like fix a specific item or if you like forget the item's name, which you know that happens a lot around here, but <laughs> I'm not with me because you know I I've done my research I've done uh, like as much research as humanly possible for these dang vehicles now back to the main discussion yeah if you guys do not like the dang fast and fashionable series by all means go ahead don't like it they are fairly cool world of vehicles might I add yeah if you don't like them then like more for us who actually want the more obscure vehicles. I'm not sure if like any other fast and fashionable molds carried over to like the regular Roller series. I'm talking about like the other ones, the Mustang, Vespa, the Mini Cooper, the Dune Buggy, and the PT Convertible. I'm not talking about the freaking Shout and Go model or the freaking It Comes Back model or the freaking little tethered remote version either and stuff. I'm talking about like the fast and fashionable mold of them, basically. I don't know if they reused that body style and like retooled it to so it can like have a roof or something like that obviously the acura 
it was reused in the freaking Tolly Tune series and stuff. And the uh, Harley was obviously used in like a plethora of like, you know, rumble choppers and turbo choppers and stuff like that. The Vespa, that wasn't used at all. I'm pretty sure that's exclusive to the series, like the Mustang, Dune Buggy, Mini Cooper, and the PT Convertible. That mold of it, really. But it would have been cool if they made like a pizza delivery Vespa as well. Like, if I had like a duplicate that was in like, you know, horrible condition, I would make a pizza delivery custom. You guys already know how I am with my custom vehicles. I go all out with them. But, um, yeah, that's basically it for this obscure World Rippers series and stuff. Well, sub-series at that. It still is a World Ripper series, though. but, um, just like Caterpillar is a World Ripper series and Freedom Force is a World Ripper series. And World Ripper's Junior and World Ripper's Preschool. Then there's Cat Preschool, which is a sub-series of a sub-series, but then there's also the least thought about sub-series, which is, you know, Mad Machines. And then there's Rip's Garage as well. Both were kind of um, discount World Ripper series in a way. Then there's the movie license sub-series, 007, Marvel, and DC Comics. And then there's the other brand licenses for sub-series, Hot Wheels and Dub. And they're all Roll Ripper vehicles and stuff. They're all Roll Ripper series. That's why I always put Roll Rippers in the titles of them. For him to say these are not Roll Rippers vehicles, that makes no sense at all. Some of the boxes of them even say Roll Rippers that I've seen. And some of the first gen Caterpillar boxes have Roll Rippers on them as well. Not sure about Freedom Force, but those are obviously Roll Rippers as well. I mean, come on, they were on the Motor Island, the freaking website. Obviously, Fast and Fashionable wasn't, though, because, like, those were made before that game existed. But either way, they're still Roll Rippers. It's just showing his ignorance. Just sad, honestly. That's pretty much it for this Roll Rippers series review, pretty much. Um, now, next, I may do either Caterpillar or Freedom Force. Then the other Roll Rippers sub-series after those. Or, you know what, you guys can choose either Caterpillar or Freedom Force. Also, tell me in the comments, tell me in the comments, um, which is your favorite fast and fashionable vehicle. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Bye, you guys. Make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more Roll Rippers content. <laughs>